as chairman of Cork County Council's Historic Monuments Advisory Committee, I am delighted to introduce this short video on the care of historic ruins. The production of this video is in line with our chief function of our committee to provide advice on best practice regarding the care of our historic monuments. The making of this video is a new initiative by the Historic Monuments Advisory Committee designed to complement our leaflet on the care of historic ruins. There is a wide range of historic masonry ruins in the county such as old farm buildings, abandoned dwellings, as well as the medieval castles and churches. These are all part of Cork's built heritage. Without care, these ruined buildings will eventually crumble away and be lost to future generations. It is important to establish whether the ruin is protected by legislation and what types of notification, permissions or consents may be required before undertaking any works. If the ruin is a recorded monument or a national monument, then written notification or written consent from the Minister of Housing, Local Government and Heritage is legally required for any works can take place. If the ruin is a protected structure or located in an architectural conservation area, then the advice must be sought from the County Council's conservation officers. Many of the ruins can be conserved by low-level interventions and maintenance. In other cases, professional expertise will be required. This decision will depend on the age and the importance of the structure, its condition and the level of works required. We are fortunate today to have the expert advice of David Kelly who is a long-standing member of the Historic Monuments Advisory Committee and a very experienced conservation engineer. We are here today to introduce conservation to a more general audience. At this site, before you enter, you need permission to enter and you need to know what consents you have. So, assuming that you have your permission to come in and you have your consent, the first thing to do is to make an assessment of the building. So that involves essentially looking at the building, looking at it all, all over, seeing what, what's uh, growing around it, what's growing on it, and in, in a general way, what's growing on the site. So ivy on the building, big trees near the, near the building. When that is done, the next thing to do is to make a record of the building by photographing it, all walls, inside and outside, and with some close-ups to show defects. So in looking at the building, of course, what we want to see is what condition is the building in? Is the pointing eroded? So is it very dry looking? Are there cracks? Are there areas where the masonry is falling out, overhanging masonry, or leaning walls. Any of those last three, especially overhanging masonry, leaning walls, or crumbling masonry, will need specialist advice. The purpose of conservation is to preserve the historic structure for future generations and to reduce its deterioration into the future. The principle of conservation is minimum intervention and that means doing the absolute minimum to the structure that is necessary to stabilise it or prevent it from deteriorating further. What we're interested in is historic masonry, that is buildings or structures made of stone. In County Cork they are either made from sand and siltstone, which is soft and can sometimes be very friable, or limestone, depending on the area in which uh, the building is located, always quarried locally. Most construction is built with what we call rubble stones. That is, they're built more or less as they came from the quarry. Sometimes they're roughly squared, but those areas around windows and doors and the coins of the building are usually better squared. They may be laid 
in a random fashion, that is where there is no discernible difference between the uh, construction of the masonry as it, as it rises up. Or it may be laid in courses where you will see each day's work defined by a straight course. Now that you've got all your consents in place and you have all your permissions, it's time to organise a programme of work. Now, the very first thing is to control vegetation. This is something that has to be done on an annual basis. The biggest problem is ivy and the ivy will have to be trimmed back tight to the wall but stems must not be cut. The ivy must be kept alive. This is, will avoid destabilizing the masonry and allow for the wall to be examined more closely. Vegetation on the ground needs to be strimmed or cut with the clippers. Herbicide should not be used on the ground or on the ivy at this stage. And now that the vegetation is under control, it'll be necessary to reassess the structure. And that will allow you to prioritize those areas that first need to be repointed. When funding is in place, you may now tackle some of the ivy, but only the ivy in the area that's going to be repointed. That will have to be killed off and the roots and the stems taken out and special care has to be taken in removing the aerial stems that's those that enter the wall so that the wall may not be disturbed in the process. The mortar for pointing will be made with natural hydraulic lime either NHL 3.5 where the stones are hard or on exposed areas or NHL 2 for softer stones and more sheltered areas. The mixed proportions will be one volume of lime to two volumes of sand and grit. Mixed in a rotary mixer for at least 20 minutes with only sufficient water added to make the mix workable. The joints in the stonework where the mortar has already fallen out or been eroded or where the mortar is loose will have to be raked out in advance of pointing to a depth that's equal to twice the thickness of the joint. The area will need to be pre-wetted the day before and then the mortar is packed tightly into the joint. Large joints are filled up with pinning stones, that stones pushed into the mortar. The mortar is then struck in a concave finish and finally as it goes off it is finished with a stiff brush which, ham which is used to hammer it in. And now that you've finished pointing your section of wall you must finish the wall top over that area. If it has a soft grassy top then it should be kept in place if at all possible. If not then the area above the wall on the top of the wall will have to be cleaned out and pointed and the mortar pointing shaped so that the rainwater will fall off and pools of water won't gather on top. That's called flaunching. Your programme of work on that section is now complete.